uh, but we're going to breathe in through our nose, down into our stomach, and then just release that breath and let go of anything that doesn't serve us. So if you could just join me on the count of three and breathe in. One, two, three, breathe in. And breathe out. This next deep breath in, I want you to think about something and, and be very intentional about thinking about something that did not serve you today. Something that might have got you upset, um, angry, something that might have got you sad, something that just got you not thinking in your right mind. And whatever that is, as you exhale, let that thought go, all right? On three, breathe in. One, two, three, breathe in. And breathe out. This last deep breath that we're gonna take, I want you to breathe in, and then we're gonna breathe in again on top of that breath. And when you exhale, I want you to be very intentional about, about making a sound as you let that air go out of your body. And you'll see what it does for you. On three, breathe in. One, two, three, breathe in. Breathe in again. Now let it go. <sighs> All right. Very good. Very good. So, brothers, we like to honor our ancestors. We always want to just start firmly rooted. One of the challenges that they have been coming at us with is to try to remove our history out of our schools, out of all places because they understand our power lies in our understanding of our journey, our history. And so we affirm our ancestors. We acknowledge that there are those who came before us who put in work, who sacrificed, who may not have been perfect because nobody is, but they try to do their best. And they try to do their best work so that we could build on the work that they did. So we ask you to lift up your fists and say the name of an ancestor in your bloodline, somebody who directly in your bloodline that you know that if it were a brother, they would be in here with you. If it were a sister, they would have driven you here and made sure you came up in this space. So on three, someone in your bloodline, and we affirm it by saying ashe or amen or whatever you're comfortable with. One, two, three. Pearl Davis, ashe. And then we hold it for those great ones who just said, we're going to put in work for everybody, not just for the people in my family, but people in movement work. So I saw my brother back here with James Ball went on. Um, so any of those ancestors whose name you want to call that's resonating with you in this moment, we want you to call those names. On three, one, two, three. Paul Roberson, Ashe. And then finally, for those who will come after us, who one day will call our names if we put in the work, if we do the right thing, if we try to build a different kind of space, that folks are free, our folks are free. So for those beautiful ones not yet born, we say, Ashe, 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 Ashe So we call this a what kind of a space? Safe space. And a what space? Sacred space. And a what space? Healing space. I think it says it on my shirt. Who was cheating? Was somebody cheating? Read my shirt. Um, yes, a safe, sacred, and healing space. So what we really want to be able to do in this space is allow anybody that's had a, a, a challenging day, week, month, hell, life, that, that could just use some extra brotherly love, some extra black man lab love. What we say is, come to the middle of the room. We all gonna come show you love, dap you up, hug you, say, brother, I see you, I love you. Um, and then do that with each other as well because it's so often that there are spaces that we don't have that, right? When you're walking down the street and a brother walks right by you, doesn't say, hey, how you doing? Or brother, I see you or anything. Um, Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we're, we're providing that kind of space. So if there's anybody in here, we ain't going to ask you no questions, but if there's anybody in here that's got a, something going on in your life and you can lose some black man lab love, come, come show this brother love. Everybody get up and show each other love.
so we got to just create some space where we say at least this for these 90 minutes this is us it's for us it's about us it's for us to love support each other and we know that if we can do it in here for 90 minutes we could go out take it to our block take it to our neighborhood and definitely take it into our homes where our sisters and our children are to create safe space for them. Everybody all right with that? So we're asking you that this not be your last time in the space, that if you feel the energy, if you feel like this is helpful, that you come back and you bring somebody like Brother Kenny did and you keep bringing people so that we can keep growing our movement so that we can change and transform all the spaces that we go into. Everybody good? Yeah. Right on. So we get ready to jump it off. Um, this is about, our conversation tonight is about overcoming adversity. And so, um, you know, we're going to ask each brother to share. Um, oh, let's give it up for Nock, uh, the ear doctor. The ear doctor. <laughs> so y'all know how we go. Uh, if the mic gets, uh, gets too, you know, Glued stuck to in somebody's hand. hand. Naka will do this. And then we'll do what? And then they'll pass the mic so we can kind of keep it moving. Oh, uh, you got a new one. Um, and so we just ask um, if brothers could, in about two minutes, introduce themselves and a little bit about whatever challenge that you want to share, that you have been, um, whatever adversity you've been overcoming um, or have overcame or however you feel yourself situated. What's good, brothers? My, I'm, my name is Nate. I'm from Chicago. Uh, I'm a paralegal at Insurance Defense Firm. And um, one of the main challenges, adversities I overcame is just being black in America. And uh, how, how I deal with that is knowing that I can go into any room and like a chameleon adapt to my, to my surroundings and adapt to my circumstances. Because as you see, I'm in a wheelchair, so I, I've adapted to that. And some would say very well, but I say every day it's a struggle. And so how I wake up, what I tell myself in the morning, I listen to affirmations about how good I am, how good I become and what I and I just reminisce on the things I've been through and where I need to go and I understand by waking up today is just one day a part of that journey. So every day I'm just laying brick onto on to my road to success. So that's just how I go about it. You went, where, you go to, where you go to school? I went to school. Uh, I was graduated from Kennedy King College. Um, got my associates in general education there. Then I graduated from Morehouse College and got my BA in political science. Hello everyone, I'm Maurice Mo Barnes. I'm a dad of twin boys. I'm going through adversity. Um, one young son of mine, I was trying to get him to come here. Uh, even the judge told him he had to come here. Um, after uh, violence towards me and family and unfortunately we had another episode where uh, he's back at Fulton County um, and so um, I'm just trying to be a dad dealing with finances and unexpected things um, I'm also a Morehouse man political science under Dr. Tobe Johnson you did, did you have Tobe yeah yeah Tobe all right <laughs> and so uh, that's where I am right now I'm here at my son CJ Clarence He's enjoying it, um, getting out and seeing other faces. So I appreciate being here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Beasley. I'm from Chicago, currently living in Tallahassee. And currently uh, living in Tallahassee, working for Florida a &M University, where I'm a graduate in business administration and the MBA in business administration. Uh, I just was up here uh, visiting family and friends over the weekend. I was asked, could I stay an extra night and come to the 
Black Men's Lab. And uh, just by coming and just sitting here before it started, I just felt a positive vibe. And uh, I'm very grateful that I did reschedule my flight to tomorrow uh, so I could be here with you guys. As far as adversity, all of our adversities are different. Uh, I have challenges that I deal with every day and uh, I wake up and I thank God just for another day and I look forward to just great days each day because it, tomorrow's not promised. So I have been through some things and uh, I'm grateful to just be here amongst you all and, and uh, hopefully we'll share some of those things with you all this evening. Thanks for having me. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Willie Davis IV. I am originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've been here in Atlanta for about, I think, almost 25 years. One of the things that I stress to folks is that I live my life on these streets. I did 30 years in the sets, and I gave up my colors when I moved to Atlanta because I had a son. And I didn't want my son to follow in my footsteps. So one of my biggest adversities now is trying to reach these young brothers here to let them understand that the streets ain't got no 401k plan. There ain't no retirement plan. It's either hell or a jail cell. No health insurance. The only thing that you get to see is you get to see your friends either die, get locked up, or turn on you. I had a lot of people tell me that I was not going to make it this far. But because I moved here, I turned my life around to where now I come to the black man's lab and I can tell this, this story to everybody. Not only am I doing this, but I turned my life around to be a music artist, an, an actor, an author, and I'm right now the treasurer for my, for my Toastmasters club. So my thing is, if, if I could turn my life around and disavow with every, all the negativity and adversity that people throw at you or what you're not going to be, nobody here has any excuse. Um, any brother here want to dig deeper into specific adversities that y'all have dealt with. I know, Bro Barnes, you've also, in addition to what you've been dealing with with your son, I know you um, have been, as a single father, um, and also has some health challenges. Um, because sometimes we think that we the only ones going through something. And so our ability to be transparent with each other allows other brothers to, to be able to say, yeah, I'm going through something too. And um, um, like our brother got up, he went, came to the middle. We didn't ask him any questions as to why he needed us to come and show him additional love. Um, but sometimes it's good to speak on it. So anything, you know, and I know um, Nate, your challenge in terms of how you got in the chair and that whole, you know, so just, if we delve a little bit deeper into some of those things to share with brothers and then um, I know other brothers can share as well um, because we know that for you to be in this room, you overcame something because if it were up to them, none of us would even be in communication with each other. We wouldn't even be in, in relationship if it were up to them, but we've overcome all of that negativity about Black men ain't this and all of that in order for us to come and join one to another and trust each other enough to be in this space. So I know everybody has something to offer and I just would like for you brothers, if y'all wanna dig a little deeper um, in two minutes and then we'll open it up. Sure, uh, so in 2021, um, we lost my son's mother uh, she was a cancer survivor, heart failure survivor from the chemo, and um, we have been divorced since 2015, but I tried to really stay engaged with my sons. And I was engaged, and because of the strain of everything, that, that went left. But the real thing was the hardship I had working with 
the older twin um, and what he went through with his own emotional issues, which were exacerbated by him not taking his medicines and experimenting with weed and mom hiding dad, you know, not letting me visit and all of that. And uh, just most recently, you know, um, I almost passed this Christmas from uh, sepsis and I'm still just trying to go and I have to put my um, faith in God and do my best for uh, my son CJ. You know, I'm, I, I look pretty calm here right now, but I'm really hanging on, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, from things hitting me left and right that I've had no control over. Um, the last time my son flipped out last week, you know, he actually tried to kick the door in and now I'm being charged for the damages um, of monies that I'm like, okay, this is, you know, whatever God, you know, this ain't funny. <laughs> uh, and I'm tired. People say, you know, ask God for strength. No, he's given me enough strength. Never ask God for strength because he'll put you in situations just to show how strong you are. I need mercy. <laughs> so that's where I am right now. Um, <laughs> adversity. Uh, adversity is overcoming a difficulty. Um, and my and my own difficulty was myself. It was my own ego. I I wanted to be tough in a room full of guys who also wanted to be tough in a, on a block with guys who also wanted to be tough. So one of my first adversity was just coming over my own ego and being able to have an opening ear to those around me that actually love me and not the ones that pretend to love me. For uh, for instance, like. So the first time I got shot, I, I, like I thought I was tough until I got hit the fifth time. And so first time I got shot was by my people that's supposed to be my so-called friends. And, and, I, and I still thought I was tough after that, after that I was having struggle moving this arm. And then when it finally hit me that I wasn't tough is when I was laying on the ground. And the first thing my, that came to my head was what my pops told me was, I told you don't be hanging around these niggas. <laughs> and so, and so like, and, and it took me back to all, everything I did wrong because at that moment I thought it was over with and I'm like, damn, I should have just listened. And so, and in that moment I was just, I was ready to give it all up and I woke, I fell asleep in the ambulance. I didn't give it up at that moment. I was on the ground, like five people got shot and I was the last one to get picked up out of everybody. And then that's when I, I went to sleep and I woke up and my father was right there by my side. And so now that, that what I learned from that situation is that, and it wasn't the people, my friends that, so it was my so-called enemies that put me in that situation. So when I, I had to learn that the only people that I need to pay attention to is the people who actually pouring into me and who actually care about my well-being and not this image that I perceive of what I, what I think I am. One of my biggest ad adversities, like my man said, is, is really knowing who my friends are and trying to be loyal to him. My, nephew, my nephew's father was my best friend. He was actually our leader. And he got me caught up. And little did I know that he was already on papers. Mm. When, we, when they separated us, he told a different story as to what happened and put everything on me. But because he was my boy, and I'm still being loyal, I went along with it. And we got, at the time we got, two, we got two years probation. If we stayed out of trouble for two years, they would drop the charges. Six months left on our probation, he comes and he picks me up. And he says, he drops a 38 in my lap. And he says that he wants to go rob Hot and Now. Hot and Now is Atlanta's equivalent to Checkers. Me being stupid, I'm still riding along with him because that's my boy, that's my nephew's father. 
what made me realize who I was dealing with is as we was riding down the street, he looked me coldly in my face and he said, if this doesn't go well, both of us ain't getting away. I looked at him, I was like, what you mean both of us ain't getting away? He straight up looked at me and he said, even if I gotta shoot you in your back, this is the man that we follow behind. He's my nephew's father. He tried to use my nephew as a way, like I quit talking to this man. Because I started understanding, like being, like being here, y'all gotta understand. This environment, we come from all walks of life. And the whole reason that we're here is to be positive. And we have to look around, we have to explain to these young men that look at your friends, because everybody ain't your friend. Hmm. Everybody ain't your brother. We were not calling each other play brothers, play cousins, whatever, it's not always the case. You can know somebody for years. I've known this man for 20 years, and he threatened to shoot me in my back. The hardest adversity for me, and it still is, even with even being around brothers like this, is because I still have that, that mentality of, is you, yeah, like, like which one is which? Which one is which? Who can I trust? Like who's real and who's not? That's a hard thing, especially when we black. And the one, the one thing that we supposed to be able to depend on is each other. They had a song back in the day, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. Sam and Dave. There's another saying, am I my brother's keeper? And this is what we gotta get back to. We all going through something, like, like Maui said, like my man here said, we all going through something, and the only way that we can come through it is this right here. And I just do my best to, to continue all what right. I usually go through. I do my best to be myself, and I do my best to just, just, just do something, do things that my mom would want me to do if she was still around. If my mom was still around, she would have told me to keep on going even if it's tough. And All my right. mom would have told me to go through everything. I had heard about this since I started working here a year ago and been in another facility. But um, I would say your dad loves you. Your dad has said one or two things that's critical. And that is, uh, what you just said is, you can't carry the world on your shoulders, mm. right? So let's bring it down a little bit. <clears throat> let's try to focus on one or two things that's gonna help you take that first step and get that first victory, right? And once you get that first victory, CJ, then we trust and hope that that will be encouraging enough to encourage you to take that next one, you see? So once you have that first win, then you get confidence and you figure out how you're gonna get that second win. That doesn't have to be a big win, CJ. It could be a small win, that's what I'm saying sometimes. Just kind of like rethink some things. Ask a good group of guys here to help you rethink some things, maybe write them down. Scratch some stuff out, right? Let's get one or two victories. Now, the YMC of Great Atlanta need help this summer, right? They got a website that you can go to, got a whole lot of jobs on it, right? Summer jobs, okay? For people from all walks of life, no matter what challenges, disabilities you may have or have not, you know, have, right? Go take a look, apply, go into a local, go into a Y branch and ask for the executive director. Say, I want to talk to the executive director of this facility. I need a summer job. Start there, CJ. Start right here, if this is in your neighborhood. You gotta start somewhere. So, I, I appreciate your testimony. Brother, I gotta run. Hope I'll be back in the future. But, but yes, sir, just one little step at a time, CJ. You get that first win, and you know what? Bro, you be ready for that second one. And I believe you can do it, brother. Brothers, I appreciate you being here and showing the strength to share what you've shared with us. 
because I know it took a lot of strength. And um, in this life, to get through certain adversities, we need peace. And all of us can contemplate on this when I ask this question, but I would like to hear from these brothers primarily. What is your ultimate peace, or what would be your ultimate peace? Because peace can heal a whole lot of things. Uh, I would say my ultimate peace would be health. Just staying healthy, remaining healthy, that's mentally, physically, emotionally, and just all around health because I believe health is wealth and, and in order for you to take care of anything else, you gotta take care of yourself. So you can't pour from, a, pour from an empty cup. You gotta make sure your cup is full in order to pour into anything else that you wanna do in life. So I would say prioritize your health because ultimately your health will bring you peace and it would, it would reciprocate through everything else in your life once you got a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit, and just being around good people who pour into you as well. Um, I guess for me at this point, it's just um, being able to make sure I'm providing for my sons wherever they're at, right now knowing that I've, I've done the best that I can uh, with the resources I have. That's very interesting because that's my major goal in life and I share with everyone, don't let anyone disturb your peace. When you have peace, your walk is easier, your, the way you talk, the way you move, and so that's what I get up every day with is saying, my peace is valuable and I can't let anyone disturb that, but my ultimate peace that makes me feel good, the Bible say we should serve. And I like being around people, I like to serve. Currently I work at Florida a and and I'm a graduate admissions coordinator. I leave every day feeling like I help someone. Matriculate to get another degree young people that's trying to do better. So when I leave, you want to get in the door. I was blessed to get a job back at my alma mater after going through what I went through. But I feel that you have to find peace that makes you feel good at what you do. And once you do that, hold on to it uh, and don't let it go and don't let anyone disturb it. Stay consistent, stay disciplined, and that's how I find peace, being consistent, disciplined, and being around people who are trying to do the things that I'm trying to do. But don't let anyone, anyone disturb your peace, be it your family members, your wives, your girlfriends, anyone, because you wanna be that reflection that they can see, like what keeps them so calm? And then you say, peace of mind. Like everybody else said, peace has to start within first. And the challenge is going to be to keep it. That's going to be your adversity. Because the moment that you start finding that peace, somebody's going to come for it. And they're going to challenge you. They're going to push you. They're going to piss you off. They're going to do everything to disturb your peace. I find my peace you know, outside of trying to be around positive people to keep my mind straight is I find peace within my music. I, can, I found that I can write just about anything. I can write about love. I can write about being hurt. I can write about being scared. I can write about anything that I'm feeling, and I can put it to music. And what I found out, like Molly said, you never know who else is going through the same thing. I have music out there that people come back, man, you know what? I'm going through the same thing. How do you know what's going on? It's like, bro, it's just, it's, it's what I'm feeling. They call it, they call some of us empaths because we feel energy. We feel energy, the strong, me, I have a problem with, I feel the strongest energy that's around me. 
And because me, myself, I have a lot of anger issues. And I tell people that I keep myself mentally sedated, which means that it's a, it's a struggle for me every day to keep my temper down, to keep my mind. So I tell people that my term is mentally sedated to keep myself straight, to keep my peace because I've been in, since I've been in Atlanta, I've been in four anger management classes. And part of the reason, part of the reason of that is, Molly knows my dad. My dad is very pro-black. I have that in me. And one of the problems that I had going to anger management class, if anybody's ever been one, is the race of the instructor. <laughs> that has always been my problem because my first question is, well, Mr. Davis, why are you here? Why are you here? Well, let me explain something. Do you, do you know you're here because of Judge Century? I said, do you understand that you've never been a black man a day in your life? Do you understand that when you walk into the store, don't nobody follow you around? Police don't stop you on the street and ask you for your ID and ask you, do you belong in this neighborhood? Do you live here? Do you have any concept of what it means to be black? You, our reaction to your situation is not going to be the same. So their response is, we're going to take you back in front of the judge. I can't help who I am, but I know myself enough to not let anybody disturb my peace. My music and my poetry, that's where I find my peace. You have to find your niche. You have to find where you, what, what it is, the one thing, there's something in everybody's life, in everybody's world, that you find peace of mind in. And you have to hold on to that. Yeah, peace and love, brothers. Yeah, glad to see everybody here today, man. Like uh, Baba Mawuli said, my name is Biko Algani. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I just started a clothing brand, right? It's called the Art Years, Art. Uh, A-R-T, years. Uh, it represents the long years of grinding for your art. You know, and uh, I want to inspire the youth to find their passion and find their purpose, you know. And uh, our slogan is find your art, which means find your passion and purpose. I also have a plan, you know, I mean, once you find your passion and your purpose. You know, I started off uh, printing out shirts in memory of my mom, and I started off with the smallest, heat press ever, you know what I mean? And uh, also, I started from a warehouse job, you know, just investing my, my money, my checks from a warehouse job. And I just been um, going up from there, man, just trying to inspire the youth to find a passion and purpose in life, man, because I had a hard time finding my passion. You know, and I, I, I've always been passionate about art, but I had to dig deeper in and try to figure out what I really want to do in life. And I, I just want to inspire the community and the youth to get themselves together, man. Find a plan, find their passion, find their purpose. And uh, I just want to say, uh, it's glad I'm glad to see all these brothers still, man, organizing and supporting Baba Mawuli. And I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing this so that the young brothers can see that we can be more than what they say that we are. We're more than criminals. We're more than drug dealers. We're more than gangbangers. If you take your average drug dealer out of, the, out of the community of selling drugs and you put him on the car lot or in the, in the housing market doing the exact same thing that he's doing in the streets, how many cars you think he'll sell? How many houses he gonna sell? He'll all sell their best person. But we're not taught to believe that. We're taught that that's all we're going to be is gangsters, drug dealers, criminals. Look around. This is proof right here that we're more than that. Sure. What routine these brothers practice, right? If you don't have a routine, you don't have an anchor to where you're trying to do. So every morning, what's your routine? Prayer, affirmations meditation, whatever, working out, those are the little steps, CJ. If you just did three push-ups every day, or you did three minutes of meditation, we trying to build momentum for black men in our community. So brothers, if y'all will come on up, so have our young brothers and we want them to be able to see that we've got their back, that they're, we want them to run straight ahead, to feel 
us behind them, supporting them. And then we got the Warriors here. Y'all, y'all are the Warriors, so um, you're not elders, you're not young, but you're critical. So we just want us to always remember what we do is intentional about how we try to build together in community. Ashe? And just repeat after me. I believe in this change. I believe in this change. It won't break here. It won't break here.